Hi there guys, uh, here I am with Kev O'Kane. Uh, Kev is fighting for the uh, amateur middleweight Fight UK title tonight and uh, he's from UTC Gym in Birmingham. How are you doing Kev? I'm good, thank you. Excellent. Obviously you fought on the last show, uh, you put on a great performance, you've come back to, to claim the belt now. Yeah. Um, any special preparation for the title fight? No, just exactly the same. I, I, we've got every sort of style at UTC so I'm, I'm ready for anything. So. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you look really, really good last time and obviously, look, we all know UTC so you've got some awesome guys training out there. You've got the likes of uh, Vaughan Lee, um, who's obviously US feet, UFC fighter. And we've also got a lot of the guys who fight on the show here at Fight UK. So, you know, we love to get the UTC guys down there. You always bring a big crowd, always very, very vocal. So I would assume you're going to have a few guys in the crowd tonight shouting your name. Yeah, most definitely, especially with two of us being on the card this time. Last time it was just me, so... Excellent. Down to and uh, obviously, look, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be desperate to walk away with that, uh, with a gold around your waist. Yeah. Excellent. Well, look, Kev, like I said, you're looking in good shape. Uh, you look like you've been training hard. You've got that little glint in your eye. You've got a smile on your face. That's it. I love that. <laughs> I can see you're desperate to get in there. You're desperate to bring that belt back. So what I'll do is I'll wish you the best of luck, mate. And I'm looking forward to seeing you fighting for the title Thank tonight. Thank you very much. Your champion, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Northampton. He's 27 years old, stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, and weighs in at 185 pounds. He fights for BST and has a perfect, undefeated mixed martial arts record of three contests with three wins. He's your reigning, defending, undisputed Fight UK middleweight champion. Let's hear it for Matic Solonia. Okay, so we are in for a middleweight title fight. Amateur rules, this is scheduled five three-minute rounds. Kevin Kane from UTC in the blue corner with the blue shorts. Machet Slanina from BST in the red corner with a little bit of reddy orange on his shorts. See uh, experienced corners for both guys. Danny Batten in the corner of Slanina. Okay, and as a UFC star, Vaughn Lee in his corner, both coming from very good gyms. I expect a good fight. Yeah, UTC and BST are two of the biggest in the Midlands area. Nice, Maciek is looking to isolate the leg and go for the ankle trip, and he reverses it with his own ankle, and that was very nicely done. Yeah, the defending champion, uh, Maciek, Won it last time out against uh, Shane Flaherty. And undefeated so far, 3-0. But Kevin O'Kane got some real momentum coming into this fight. He's won four straight. So uh, it has all the makings of a good matchup. Certainly one worthy of this, uh, the middleweight strap at Fight UK. Yeah, I mean, we've got uh, O'Kane has got slightly more experience on paper. So Nini on top, he, he's trying to trap that uh, left arm of O'Kane to get off his uh, ground and pound. But O'Kane's wise to it, keeps pummeling the arm back in. But you can see he keeps trying to trap the arm with his knee. And if you can put him in that spot, that would be a great position to start letting off that uh, right hand there from the top. O'Kane looking to try and isolate an arm. Doesn't quite get there. No, that's right. But the whole time there, Machet's left leg is stuck in half guard. And uh, we're seeing a limitation here because we're up against the cage wall. So, O'Kane okay, can't really do much with it in terms of sweeps because the cage wall is not being his friend in this instance. Yeah, you see he's trapped that arm. He's been working for it and now he's got it. it Give him a chance to get a few clean shots off and then O'Kane okay, pummels it back in. Looking for the uh, full mount now with Slovenia and I think he's got it. But working off the cage is O'Kane okay, trying to free himself. Slania would do well to just rustle his way to the middle, and he does. Okay, and giving up the back. Here's the transition. Slania on him like a backpack, giving him no room at all. And if he can flatten him out, this is a good position for submissions and strikes. This is dangerous place to be. He has turned him. He's on his side. Now we can see Okay driving his chin down. So Machek giving him a couple of little digs to the face there, trying to persuade him otherwise. Yeah, it just opens it up. That's on the on the jaw, but it's going to be uncomfortable. 
It is. I've seen people tap before due to just the discomfort and the panic of it. But uh, okay, and has done really well there to defend that rear choke. But he's putting himself back in it again. He'd rather be in rear choke, getting choked, than getting punched in the face from Mount. That's yeah, he's not the best idea. Eating some hammer fist though for his troubles. And this has been uh, nothing if not a dominant round for Slonini, the champ. Yeah, fantastic start. Billy would be in tough spots and working his way out. Uh, so, you know, it won't be unfamiliar to him. And, uh, yeah, it'll certainly be looking to pick it up. A big shot lands there. And Slonini went in. OK, and look for the head kick, but he, uh, actually give him the knee as he dropped his level. Straight in the face, and that would not have been fun, but that was a relentless takedown from Machet from one side to the other of the cage, and he finally got his man down on the canvas just as he walks into his corner. Yeah, he was like a dog on a bone on that single leg. Wouldn't give it up at all, and he got his re uh, rewards for it because now he's back on top, back in the dominant position. I mean, that kind of uh, tenacity is the reason why guys become champions, you know? He ate a big shot, but he just carried on, drove straight through it, and uh, eventually got rewarded for his efforts at the end. Oh, you're right. There is a reason that Macek is the, uh, is the champ. Here we see half a crucifix. Can he lock down the other arm? Yeah, and uh, under these rules, obviously, no elbows. That makes that position a lot more dangerous, but... Uh, you know, with clubbing with that right hand, if you can trap, uh, isolate your opponent's arm, you know, it's a good place to really put some shots in. And, you know, they're not the biggest shots, but, you know, add them up and they'll take the toll. The shot's a shot if referee Mark Woodard's watching and you get 20 of those in the face and you're not intelligently defending yourself. And it's very difficult to do that for Crucifix and it's game over. But I'm going to stop talking about Crucifix now because whilst we've been jabbering on, Machek's moved off into side control. He's let go of that Crucifix. He's trying to re-secure an underhook. Yeah, looking to isolate underneath that far arm, obviously to maintain his position on top. So then you're very tight on top, very methodical, not giving anything away. And O'Kane just really struggling to get out from underneath at the moment. Eating some big right hands as well as he tries to turn to follow his underhook. You know, it's got to happen to escape. Sometimes you've just got to give up, uh, you know, a little bit of that comfort, a little bit of the... Uh, a little bit of his protection and he went for the underhook to try and get out ate some punches and uh, decided that being flat on his back was the better option again absolutely there are many things in the world that are a better option to getting punched in the face some of which i won't go into details with now so now are we going to see okay look to use the cage wall i'd like to see that right now yeah and he's using it you can see him coming up on the arm Sticking his back against the fence, maybe trying to isolate Salinas so far arm for a, a Kimura, but he lets his hips get taken back underneath him and he's lost the opportunity to wall walk. It's, it's a really important skill to have, and uh, you know, he'll be disappointed that he's given that up. Salinia just grinding, methodical, wearing his man down, not giving away anything. You know, he's the champ and it doesn't look like uh, relinquishing his belt just yet. Not if these first two rounds are anything to go by, Lloyd. That's it. And uh, it's interesting. It's not it's very methodical, long. escaping. It just is not working for him. He needs to try and explode, create scrambles and get out that way. He does, yeah. You're absolutely right. Goes with the right kick to the body. Let's see if uh, he can keep it on the feet for a little bit longer this time. I was just going to say, with someone who's got wrestling of uh, Machet's calibre, I would not be throwing kicks. But here we see the tables have turned. Kevo came with the trip takedown. Yeah, nice reversal there. That was beautiful work from O'Kane. Looking to sink in the dash choke maybe from that position. I know that I want to cause an argument, but I like to call it Bravo. It's only the Americans who call it Dars. Let's be honest, Joe Dars didn't invent it. Not that I want to start an argument. Either way, whatever you call it, Kevin Kane had a very, very deep Brabo <coughs> choke there. Um, indeed. And uh, he's found Boom. himself on top. You know, he threatened with a submission. Now he's inside the guard. And uh, this is his chance to really impose some punishment of his own. That's going to have done wonders for his confidence, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, a bit of urgency now, you know, the, there is three rounds left, but, you know, it's two rounds down. You know, Salini is two rounds to the good, and, uh, you know, it really is the challenger 
that, that needs to start making the moves. That's it, yeah. You're absolutely right. Salini so doing a good job of controlling the posture. As I say that, commentator's curse again. Okay, back up to his feet. Little readjustment of his uh, gentleman's area protector there. As he comes in, look at that. Powerful double leg, and O'Kane just shakes it off. Yeah, and that is a very tiring thing to have to happen. Yeah. Halfway through the third round, having your shot stuff like that, it really does take the wind out of your sails. And O'Kane is now, look, his shots are crisp. This is what we're talking about in the first round. He's, he's in it for the distance. And he's just about woke up now. I think we're seeing a different calibre of uh, Kev oh. Kane that we saw in round one. Another big kick, and Salini's on his back. O'Kane oh, really finding that momentum. He wants to get back up to the feet. And that was almost a mirror image of what we saw earlier in uh, round one or two. As Slanini shot, O'Kane oh, just timed that kick, and it hit him, bang on the jaw of it again. And now he's finding his rhythm. That's it, yeah. I think he's got a small window here. I mean, he's really shocked Machet Slaninia here um, for a brief second. I'd, re I'd like to see him capitalise on it. You know, he really really needs to explode and realise that, look, you've, you know, slanina has been dominating. You've, you've got this little this little opening here. You need, you need to explore it fully. Yeah, and he's coming in with heavier punches now. A lot more confidence from O'Kane. And he just seems to have perked up. And he's uh, enjoying this fight now a lot more in round three. He is, absolutely. He looks like a man in his comfort zone. Slanina turning his back. He's on the outside of the ring. All the body language is of someone that is not... Big right hand and kick to the body. And that's it, the fight is over. We were in the last ten seconds. Unbelievable stoppage there. That is right on the buzzer. A fantastic kick there from Kev O'Kane. He started all oh, big right hand to the body, followed it up with that huge right to the midsection, crumpled the champion in half. No longer is a champion. Kevo Kane uh, dethrones him. He will be very, very happy with that, and no doubt there will be a massive celebration back at UTC tonight. After two minutes and 59 seconds of round number three, your winner due to referee stoppage from ground and pound, a new Fight UK middleweight champion from the blue corner, Kev O'Kane. But let's hear it for a very worthy challenge uh, champion. Let's hear it for Matek Solonia. Okay, Kev, step into the centre, please, mate. Well, when I was interviewing you before the fight, I said to you, you were desperate to break, you come out with the gold. You got the gold round your waist, mate. How are you feeling, brother? Yeah, I feel great. Yeah, I, got, uh, I could tell you was getting tired in the second round, so only the third round was where I'd, where I'd taken. Yeah. Good stuff. I mean, it was you dropped him over there with a big with a big shot. You considered going down, and you thought, nah, get back up, bring him up, because he's a very very talented grappler. The first couple of rounds, he was there when he took you back, made to get out of that. Shows your heart, your grit, and your determination. Now, obviously, it was a fantastic finish, and as I just said to you as well, you caught him with that right hand to the body, and you could see that you could see the air go out of him. So look, obviously it's going to be a celebration for you tonight. I'm assuming there's going to be a few beers sunk right now. So look, obviously you're going to bask in the glory, but what's next for Kev O'Kin? It's up to these, these men here, it's up to them, whatever they say or do, whenever, whenever, whoever. So what, what we're thinking of, a couple of defences and then maybe slip up to the pro ranks? Uh, maybe just go pro, I don't know. What we, what we are very, very pleased to see is that we have a new champion here at Fight UK and uh, we want to see you back and we want to see you defend your belt. Ladies and gentlemen, your new champion, Kev O'Kane.